Hello and welcome to another Leica review. Today we are looking at the latest lens from Leica. It's a Leica 75mm f1.25. It is a Noctilux lens. Now this lens I had talked about before and it was released about about four months ago and I mentioned this will be coming out. Of course at the time there was no news on it. There were basically some announcements that came in later on, but nobody knew what this lens could do and how it would fit in the Leica's lineup. So today we have this lens available. You can pre-order it. I put all the links down below, plus the article information where you can find in-depth information on this lens. But before we go into delving all the details on how this lens is going to be a stellar performer, I want to take you back in time to when the Leica Noctilux lenses started to appear in the market. Now we're going back 40 years, over 40 years, and we're looking at this lens, which was first produced at f1.2. It was a 50 millimeter lens, which was later on perfected by uh, Dr. Mendler, which ran for over 25 years to almost 30 years as the lens of choice that was a fast lens and it was at f1.0 and then later on with the new Noctilux which was at 0.95 it was an incredible lens as well so we have this progression of lens that has gone up from f1.2 to f0.95 and it was only produced at 50 millimeter focal length so today what we have is a lineup of lens that is going to fill a range of focal lengths. So we're going to have the 50 millimeter, we have the 75 millimeter at 1.25. Now you might be asking why is it not a 0.95 or f1? Because at the focal length of 75 millimeter or 90 millimeter, it gets even harder to bring that. Uh, number down the aperture opening but what you will have which is something that Leica also mentions is that you will have a very deep bokeh more so than if you had it with the 50 millimeter at 0.95 now most people think of Noctilux as just a low light uh, lens uh, that can capture images with great bokeh but we also have to look at it as why this lens was so fast and why it was produced because if you look at this lens as just an overall lens you are missing the point that this lens was designed to be actually a portrait lens because it se separates the subject matter from the background and it is for this reason it has been the choice of many photographers for many 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 years I have all the lenses and I've used it in my professional work and also when I wanted to use it in low light situations and it has brought great results. But what was missing was the fact that we could not go into, for example, 75 millimeter or 90 millimeter, or even the fact that we didn't have a wide angle lens at 35 millimeter. So what we are seeing is Leica filling these spots, these uh, gaps in the focal range. And this is the reason the 75 millimeter has come out. Now, if you look at the 75 millimeter, you're going to find out several things. First of all, it's a very, very heavy lens. It's 2.3 pounds, which is about a kilo and 55 grams. So it is going to be a hefty lens. Second of all, it's not a lens that you would probably want to carry on if you're going to photograph, for example, on the streets of Paris or Rome, because it's going to be a heavy lens. But what it does do is that it will give you a a tool that is very versatile it's going to be a tool that you can use in variety of situations mainly if for example if you're doing street type of photography this lens will give you this amazing possibility to capture these images that are going to be very very special now one thing that is not known and has not been mentioned about this lens versus the prior Noctilux lenses uh, is the fact that this is the newer technology. They have used and perfected the method of separating the subject matter that is in focus with the out of focus background in a much more detailed way. What I mean is the fall off. You have the in focus area and then you have the out of focus area and the drop is really fast, the fall off. So that creates this 3D pop that you will see in the images, more so than if you were looking at, for example, the Simulexes or the Noctilux of the prior eras. 
but what you will see also is the fact that this lens will serve as a great tool to make uh, some great portrait photography now in the lens elements if you look at it it's a very sophisticated design it has nine elements in six groups so it is a very sophisticated lens and it is designed with new focusing mechanism that is going to give it a more uh, easier use and it's going to make the, the, this lens a very versatile lens. Beyond that, if you look at the, the specs of this lens, it focuses up to 85 millimeters. What that means is 2.8 feet and that means that you can get really, really nice, uh, for example, face shots, mug shots. You can get uh, very detailed images from things that you're going to capture at closer distance. So that is going to be a very good thing to have. Normally at focal lengths, uh, like in telephoto range, you would not have it go to like 50 centimeters or less because it's not what is intended to be used at. But what we are seeing is we are seeing it drop down from one meter to 85 centimeters. Uh, and that is going to give uh, you the, the, the chance to f capture images that are going to be very close, very intimate, and it's going to give you the chance to perfect your and take your photography of portrait, land, uh, portrait photography into the next level. Now, beyond that, if you look at it, it has one of the most beautiful features, which is the 11 uh, diaphragms, which is the blades on the aperture. What that means is the more blades you have generally translates into a rounder bouquet and that is what we would like to have in these photographs because when you look at the photographs you realize that the bouquet has to have this beautiful if there's a light source behind the subject what you will find is that for example if it has five blades or seven blades you will have this octagonal shapes or very geometrical shapes which is not something that you would like to have in for example uh, portrait photography and also you will not want to have it because it creates this very distracting very uh, abnormal uh, bokeh so it's for that very reason having a lot of blaze translates to having a lens that performs beautifully in the bokeh part and that is something that I've mentioned in my other articles when I compared for example Canon f1.2 to for example Canon uh, to Nikon uh, lenses and also with the Noctilux. So what we are having is all these lenses that have different blade settings translating into different bouquets. This is why it is not that important to have as as wide opening as is to have the blades. Number of blades do make a big difference. So this is one of the things that I wanted to mention before I go into explaining a little bit more about this lens. Now if you look at this lens and you are stopped to f2, f2.4 for example, you, what you will find is that the, the image still retains that beautiful bokeh characteristics. So a lot of people have asked me and said it's going to cost what $13,000 to purchase this lens, is it worth the price? Well if you're comparing it to for example other lenses that are very fast in the market, well, this is not something new. This is this is this is a fast lens, and for example, Canon has been producing fast lenses at 85 millimeter f 1.2 since, uh, for example, 1970s. But that doesn't mean that it is a great lens. It just means that it's a fast lens. So just having a fast lens does not always translate to having great image quality. The image quality depends on the kind of elements that are used in the construction, in the design of the lens. This is why it translates to having great image if you all combine these characteristics into one. That is, includes the aperture blades, it requires the lens elements, it requires the way that the, lens, the light travels within the lens. For example, apochromatic aberration is a major issue. And this lens, for example, has avoided a lot of those problems. Why? Because if you look at the lenses that were produced by Leica in the past, for example, the 75 millimeter Simulux at 1.4, which is no longer in production, we'll see that it had beautiful elements that reduced the purple fringing, for example. If you look on the on the newer lenses side, you look at the 75 millimeter Summicron at f2, what you will find that it's the apochromatic lens which means that it does not have 
uh, chromatic aberration appearing in the photographs. This is something very, very important. And especially if you are going to be doing video, this is extremely important because it's very hard to remove uh, chromatic aberration from video. In the photographs, you can take the photograph and uh, in the, for example, Lightroom or other softwares, you are able to remove it, but that doesn't mean that the image is going to be perfect. What I prefer to do is to get a great image right from the camera. And this is one of the lenses that delivers that technology. Beyond that, if you look at this lens as a general use lens, you can do all kinds of things. I mean, there is not, nothing that will tell you that you cannot use a telephoto lens to do landscape, landscape photography. And it is a landscape photography if you know how to use this lens in situations where you take it out to, for example, an area where you are going to capture a certain portion of that landscape and it will look beautiful. Uh, for example, one uh, option would be like if you were to take it out to Grand Canyon, you may not want to capture all the uh, landscape, but you may want to be certainly focusing on certain aspects that appeal to you in that photograph. Photograph. So this is one of the lenses that you can use it for all those purposes. So it is a very versatile lens. It is a lens that I really like. Now, the question always comes down to, is it worth the price? Well, Leica lenses have never been cheap they have never been the kind of lens that you go and buy just because uh, it is a cheap lens to buy or own you buy it because of its quality because what it delivers now considering other lenses in the market of course it's considerably higher and it's a lens that you would want to own it because uh, it's a lens that will give you a lifetime service now, at the point where it's going to give you a lifetime service, you might say, you know what, I don't mind paying two times or three times the price, especially since you're going to be using this with your Leica system. Now, if you try to adopt lenses from other systems, it's not going to work as good on a Leica system. You want a native lens, this is the reason to invest in this. Now, having a 50 millimeter, this is one of the lenses that you can put in your system and that will complete, uh, for example, 50 millimeters and up on the other side the wide angles you're probably going to see something with the 35 millimeter that's going to come into the market and that is going to be very competitive but Leica hasn't made any announcements on that there has been no rumors but I think that it is going to be the one of the lenses that will be coming out in the next two years and if you think about it in that perspective 35 50 and 75 it completes the whole picture and it gives you a very versatile way of being able to adapt your photography to various applications. And finally, I want to mention that if you are going to purchase this lens, there's going to be a wait time because it's going to be a, one of those lenses that are going to be uh, manufactured with utmost attention. And there are going to be uh, a lot of people demanding this lens. Even though the price is high, it doesn't mean that people will be avoiding it uh, because of the price range so if you are going to place an order it will take two to three months at times to get this lens but it is well worth it another thing i want to mention to you is the 50 millimeter uh, noctilux 0.95 for example has these special uh, editions like the 25 year edition that sells relatively higher than the original lens so they retain their values and you're gonna find that the 50 millimeter as well as the 75 millimeter lenses will be a great investment for a long term. And if you have the money, if you like the lens, I would rather invest in an Octolux than go with, for example, the, uh, the Summicron. Summicron, although it's a nice lens, it will not have the same appeal as having a 1.25 aperture. This is the reason I don't mind investing into the a lens like a Noctilux 75 millimeter, especially when you compare the prices. Of course, Noctilux costs more than Summicron, but that you're paying for that difference in the bouquet, you're paying the difference for that appeal in the look. And for me, there is nothing as good as a Noctilux to use in all kinds of circumstances. So I hope this has been an informative review. There is full information on this lens on the Leica Review website and the article information is attached at the bottom. Please do visit our website and if you do have uh, time, please see 
uh, all the photographs that we'll be providing in our next article, which is going to be like an Octolux 75 millimeter photography. And I look forward to seeing in our next review. Thank you for watching.